Got a message from Luke G. I'm assuming that's what uh, L-U-C-G is short for. Uh, Luke, if um, if I've not, or Luke G, if I've not said that correctly, I apologize in advance. Uh, this message was sent to me through my inbox on the Adobe uh, Adobe Captivate forums, and Luke wrote, um, "Can you help me to understand how I can modify the native sound design provided by Captivate? More precisely, I'd like to switch the original click sound that you can hear on a button." with my own imported click sound. Thank you so much for your precious contribution. Uh, Luke also copied this uh, message to another frequent contributor. I'm not sure if they replied to Luke yet or not, uh, but I thought I would offer my own two cents as to how I would solve this problem. So let's go to Adobe Captivate here and we'll open up or create rather a responsive project. Uh, but the same thing could work with a blank project, no problem. And uh, what we'll do is we'll add, we'll get rid of this, we'll add a title here. We'll say new click sound for fun. And uh, you can do this one of two ways. You can create your own buttons using smart shapes, or you can use, of course, the standard buttons that are uh, part of Adobe Captivate for forever. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to anchor this particular button to the bottom and to the right because that's typically where I put my next buttons. We're going to call this one next uh, just because that's sort of the normal convention. Uh, let's make sure our position properties are good on here. So I'm going to say that's going to be 10% from the bottom. 10% uh, from the right hand side, uh, the height 31 pixels, and my width is going to be 100 pixels. So anyone who has watched uh, most of my videos will know I almost always disable the click sound and that's the first step in this process. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of the default click sound. We've done that here. The next thing we need to do is obviously we need to replace that click sound with something else. Now, some of you might be thinking, aha, there's add audio from the options tab. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to work. That's going to assign audio to play back at the same time that the next button appears, uh, which isn't what we want. We actually want the audio to be played, the replacement audio to be played when a user clicks that button instead. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually combine the action of going to the next slide with the action of also playing that audio sound. And anytime that you have two or more actions, you need to do an advanced action. So on the actions tab of my properties panel for this button, I'm going to select execute advanced action. Now, I haven't created a script for this yet, and this is actually a great example or a great introduction into advanced actions because this is actually one of the simplest advanced actions you could create. So let's uh, click the advanced actions icon, and this will bring up the advanced actions window. Now, there are two types of action types available, um, standard actions and conditional actions. In this case, we're looking for a standard action. A standard action is simply a set of actions that are run one after the other in the order that you see here on your screen. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to play that audio sound. So uh, rather than scrolling through the whole list of available actions, I happen to know that there's a play audio action. So I'm just going to type P on my keyboard until it shows up and there it is. Double click on that and then double click on select the audio file. Now, before I started this recording, I recorded a short little pop sound just using my microphone and my mouth making a sound. Um, so we're gonna choose that here and we'll open that up and that will become part of your library as soon as we save this action. And uh, of course, you'll be able to reuse this uh, advanced action um, 
you know, multiple times throughout your project. So for every next button or go to next slide button, you can use this action over and over again. So the final piece of the puzzle is simply to choose the action, go to next slide. So we're going to play the audio, go to next slide. Really simple. Uh, we need to give this a name. I forgot to give it a name up front here. So we'll just call this go to next slide. So that's the action name. I'm going to set, save this action and close. And of course, now we're executing advanced action uh, for this button. And it's the go to next slide action or advanced action, if you will. So let's preview this and see what it looks like and more importantly, what it sounds like. So there's my next button there. I'm going to tap it. I'm not sure that that's actually a better sound, but again, you can choose whichever sound is appropriate for your situation and then just click that button till your heart's content. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.